WVTC Radio Detroit. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, our website, www.wvtcradio.com, or download our WVTC app from the Play Store for Android users and the App Store for iPhone users. are tuned to WVTCRadio.com and the Sandy Rose Show with your host, Sandy Rose, where you'll hear the finest in gospel music and information you can use. The Sandy Rose Show can be heard every Tuesday from 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So get your pencil, paper, and your shouting shoes as you listen to today's broadcast. Why not text a friend and tell them to listen to? God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds that thy hands have made, you stood somewhere behind the great grand and glorious hills of eternity. Rearrange your agenda for the creation of this vast universe. You reach down with your omnipotent hand unto the great abyss of nothingness and threw nothing out into nowhere and nothing became something. What a world we live in. Look at this world, it's gigantic and it's grand, mountain heights with scintillating views, valleys scooped out by eternal hands, rolling prairies, running brooks, rippling streams blessed with gold, silver, diamonds, and all kinds of precious minerals. My soul sings. When I look and see how God splashed the multitude of stars kissing the heavens like diamonds sprinkled against black velvet and hanging like trapezes from the roof of God's gymnasium. You place the moon and announce for the world to hear, this is the queen of the night and she has never stopped shining. The oceans whose depths have to be measured in miles. The sun has never run out of gas. The stars keep coming out to play. The seasons still march in splendid succession. My God is real. He is from everlasting to everlasting. He even looked around one day to see what he had created and said, that's good. And one day, when he brings everything to consummation and a glorious fruition, when he comes with a shout of acclamation to take me home, what joy shall fill my heart when he calls me, I will answer 
and I will bow in humble adoration and my soul will say how great how great thou art for I know I have a house of many mansions eternal in the heavens up where Jesus lives up beyond the atmosphere the stratosphere the exosphere the troposphere up where I'll never grow old up to the streaks of gold up beyond the vicissitudes of life and I will honor him as king of kings and lord of lords and simply say to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forever and forever and forever my god how great thou art takes delight on whom in affliction I call my comfort by day my song in the night my hope my salvation my all father God in Jesus name we bless thy name for blessing us today we thank you for this another day that the Lord has made we have rejoiced and we have been glad in it we didn't necessarily rejoice because everything went our way. But something down inside of us told us to give your name the praise anyhow. And we thank you for your wonderful works and your mighty acts towards the children of men. For we realize in you we move and have our being. And we've come to bless thy name for blessing us. While we pray, we want you to search our hearts and try us to know our thoughts. See if there be any wickedness in us. Lead us in the way everlasting. And if you should find anything that's not right, cast it into the sea of forgetfulness, where it shall never rise to condemn us in this world, neither in the world to come. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Give ear unto our supplication. Have mercy upon us in a time like this. Stretch out your almighty hand.
until this present moment. And for these things we say thank you, Lord. For these things we say thank you. For everything we say, thank God. The glory be to God. We say thank you, Lord. And when the trees shall clap their leafy hands. And when the bushes shall wave their branches. When the redeemed of the Lord go marching in. Lead us to the land where the wicked will cease from troubling him, and the weary shall be at rest. Where every day God sends will be Sunday. Sabbath will have no end at all if God's children send. She said, some of y'all sitting in that house like the Lord ain't done nothing for you. <laughs>
<laughs> Nothing. But I made it over. I made it over. I made it over. I made it over through trials and tribulation. Yes, I made sir. it. And it's a good day to make it too. It's a good day to be alive. In it's the a good day. <laughs> a good day. A good day. Um, and we want to welcome everybody to um, the Sandy Rose Show. I'm Sandy Rose, and that's Richard. And um, how are you doing today, Richard? How, I saw that picture you put up um, the with fire. the. Yes. Yes. I thought we were, well, I didn't think we were finished, but from the area uh, last week, the sky was kind of blue. We saw the sun come through. But uh, what, Monday? No, Sunday the smoke came back. So there's the Angeles forest that's on fire. Uh, I was in Pasadena yesterday and um, what you saw, it seemed like it was right there, but actually it was about maybe two hours away. It was just, seemed like it was close to us. Yeah, it looked look awfully at, close. Look at the smoke and the ash. Yep, yep. It, it looked awfully close. Yeah. Awfully close. You yeah. know, I this weekend, I kind of had the blues for a, for a second. I got the blues. And that's because, you know, with uh, the Chief Justice Supreme Court, Ruth Ginsburg passing, mm -hmm. seemed like the world was coming in on us. But, you know, something I had to think about it. When you uh, gospel, you get the blues. The gospel is the answer for the blues. For example, you might say, trouble in my ways. That's the blues, right? But yeah. People come trouble don't last always. Also, you might say, uh, I laid awake at night because I couldn't sleep. That's uh -huh. the blues. But the gospel will come, but Jesus will fix it after a while. He said then, he would fix it. Then you he say, said we he may would endure it. for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Comes so, in the morning. So you let the gospel take over and you, you know, I'm feeling a little bit better. You know, we, we think the Supreme Court is going to be filled by someone conservative and a lot of things will be taken away from us. But trust God and know that he has a plan for us and something might be taking place now, but down the road, he will step in and take care of us. Yes, he will. That. Yes, he will. He always has. He always has. Well, 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 we've got my good, good friend here, Apostle Prophet, Dr. Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> All of that man of God, man of God. And you, you got to put a you got to put a T on that. You've okay. got to put the T on the end of it. On it. Man of man of God. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing good to you and to my brother over there, Pat, uh, Daryl Nichols. Bless you, sir. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> good to see the saints today. Yes, yes, honey. It's good to be seen and not viewed because you and know the viewed. saints are the saints are going in, but they I'm going still in. here. What did Reverend Cleveland say? One by one. One, one by one. one. <laughs> but not today. Not today. <laughs> Not today, not today. <laughs> We're still here. So you out, you out on the on the busy highways and byways. Actually, so I'm just leaving Christian Tabernacle Church, passed it by uh, for 60 years. My godfather, Pastor Maceo Woods. I just left the sanctuary. Uh, we're not having a concert there this year. We're having a concert someplace else. But uh, right before he passed away, he officially gave me the concert that he put on for 57 years and the last 15 or 20 years I've been sitting by his side at every yes, concert have. yes you have yes, and I didn't have. know really what I was going to do I just knew that he wanted me to sit there and I sat there if he wanted me to sing I sang if I had to get him water I got him water I yes, <laughs> you didn't did. yes you did I watched I saw it with my eyes <laughs> it didn't even matter and then when he when he the last concert, he said, uh, "My godson is going to take the concert on," and so this is the first year uh, that we will put on Gospel Supreme without 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 that man. That's right. That's right. And so, uh, of course, it is it is a uh, bittersweet. It's such an honor to be asked. But Friday night, we're going to be airing live from the House of Hope on our Facebook page, Christians Happen Church Chicago. 
and it's going to be a tribute to him. And it's going to be a tribute to the superstars of gospel, Dor Sykes, George Jordan, who was no stranger to yes, Detroit. Yes, 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 yes. Melvin Smothers, we're going to be doing some of their songs. And then the group uh, that had been singing on Sundays during this pandemic, we've rehearsed for the last three or four months to pay tribute to the choir since they have not been able to come to rehearsal. So it's exciting. Um, it's exciting. It is. It's exciting just to pay tribute to them. And so I got a whole lot of surprises. Uh, we had a TV program in Chicago called Jubilee Showcase. Yeah, yeah. You remember Jubilee Showcase? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so I was able to get some old clips of the 60s wow. of him with Jubilee Showcase. And so it's going to be great. I'm, oh, I'm, wow. I'm really excited. It's going to be healing for the church and healing for us. But uh, we're going to take the concert on. So this is the 58th consecutive concert. My, 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 my. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I mean, and the concert has always been such a blessing. I was talking about the concert the other day um, with um, our guest uh, from uh, Henry Jackson, because yeah. he was at he was at a Gospel Supreme performance. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Henry Jackson still around? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell him you said don't tell, him, don't tell him I said that. Don't tell him I said that. Because, you know, so many of the saints and the great singers and stuff that went off and, you know, we haven't heard them in so long. Yeah, and Henry he was still, incredible. Henry is still singing. And I, 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 I made a recollection of him singing with the Cleveland singers. That was the year that you guys brought the Cleveland singers. Right, right. And he was with them. He and, was with them. And they shouted and hucked and bucked. And oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh Beat yeah, the tambourine. And oh the bass, yeah, and the bass guitar. They did it all, honey. They and, did it all. And Cleo was up there, baby. She was there in full number. <laughs> full regalia. <laughs> she was in full number, and I, I, and the clip I had from it. You know, I was in the audience. And the clip that I had from it, that was before I learned how to keep the camera still, so I couldn't play it because it was just like all over, you know. I, <laughs> I, I, did, I hadn't learned that technique yet. Right. Um, so now let's talk about this, this Gospel Supreme. One more time, I'm going to put the flyer up. Okay. And uh, it's Friday, September 25th. It is this Friday night. It's a virtual concert, but it is gonna, it's going to be on Facebook. But we've got, and so... I was able to take it to a location that seats 10,000 people. Of course, we're not gonna have 10,000 people there, but it's large enough for us to socially distance, distance ourselves between 100, 150 people. And so we've got a lot of the pastors that have supported the concert down through the years. They're gonna be there in the visible audience, but it's gonna be uh, on our virtual, uh, virtu virtual page or Facebook page that is Christian Tabernacle Church uh, Chicago. And so it's going to feature uh, a tribute to Pastor Woods, pictures and videos, uh, Dora Sykes, Melvin Smothers, Pearl McComb, George Jordan, uh, and the Christian Tabernacle Concert Concert Christ. Pastor had started giving away Gold Star Awards yeah, yeah, some yeah. 20 years ago. Yeah, and yeah. this year we were able to change the name to the Reverend Maceo Woods Gold Star Awards. Oh, how and, nice. Yeah, oh, so we're trying to keep that name going. Uh, the concert, uh, historically and traditionally, is uh, every September, but because I really want to move past this vision forward musically, um, we're going to have Gospel Supreme throughout the year. I've got t-shirts, I've got hats i've got masks since we need masks now to get us yeah, through. we're gonna need masks for a while Sandy. we're gonna need them children you got you got your mask with you sandy i got my mask with me <laughs> and and not only that so this is a this is a surprise out uh we were gonna go in the studio and kind of uh support some of the vocals for the concert mm -hmm. But some of the singers said, let's just do a live concert performance. I said, fine. While we were there, we re-recorded Hello Sunshine. Listen, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Cause, and now I'm going to tell you, I saw, I was watching TV one day and saw the commercial for Corona. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> and, and they, they play hello. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure you guys get your chips, honey. And hey, listen, children, chips. I said, let's go and do some research. <laughs> yeah, get your chips, honey. Get your <laughs> chips. But they sure did. They they played Hello Sunshine and they said, get your Corona beer right here. Yeah, get your Corona beer. So we well, I can't put no Corona beer on the cover of the CD, but, but, but we, we gonna hello sunshine. <laughs> uh, and this is gonna be the first one that I wasn't physically at in in several years. So, um, yeah. yeah, we're gonna miss this one, but we will we will watch it um, online, and we're going to also share it. Um, on WVTC on the Detroit side, so Our people system. can um, so people can watch it over here. Thank you, Sandy. You, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. First we'll off, you're my sister and my friend, but you are a friend to Pastor Woods of the church, and uh, that's right. So I'm going because you know we go out to dinner. If if I go there, we go out to dinner there. If you come here, we go out to dinner. That's <laughs> right. And Bishop Woods signed my book. I was so happy about that. Um, I got my book. And and if you guys haven't gotten it, I should have had I thought about it, I would have whipped it out. Ain't it good? Um, but yes, and it's a lot of history in the book that you may not, may or may not have have known. Uh Richard, it would be good for you as well. Okay. But it's a lot of um a lot of history in the book, and it's it's a lot, of, I felt a lot of him. A lot What's of the pictures. Name of the book? Uh the uh, I, I, grace the graceful journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The graceful yeah. journey. Kind of yeah. I think he kind of kind of I think he kind of spinned off of the amazing grace that he played years ago. Okay, right. okay, okay. But so yeah. next year, Sandy and Richard, I want you to know that we pulled out as many stops for this year as we could. Uh, someone asked the question, what are we gonna do next year? We are right now working on next year's concert for the last Sunday in September. Mm-hmm. Uh, where we're going to do a documentary on Pastor B.C. Woods. That's right. That's right. Because we don't understand. We need to keep this alive. And, mm-hmm. you know, so that people can know what where they're building off of. Absolutely. You know, they're building, but they don't know whose shoulders they're standing on. You know, Absolutely. so, and if we don't tell it, it's our fault. Absolutely. Like, I love what you did, um, with uh, what's our girl from California? She's going on. Now. Oh, Edna, yeah. Ed, Edna what Tatum. you did with Edna with uh with with Prayer Tabernacle and yeah. the history on YouTube. I think that you know people need to know that a lot of the church music that we hear today came off of the backs of Prayer Tabernacle, it Christian did. Tabernacle. That's right. Uh, uh, Detroit and, so and Chicago. Many, Detroit I mean, and Chicago. Detroit and Chicago. Was yeah. LA in there? Well, I, you know, when, yeah, I, I mean, you know, of course, L.A. Absolutely. was there. Um, and then when Reverend Cleveland migrated there, you know, he picked up a lot of people that were there and pulled them up, you right. know, to um, notoriety because people are doing stuff everywhere. Um, but it, sometimes nobody notices. And speak of that, Richard, not only did he, you know, he did that, but James, Reverend Cleveland was... I think Sandy and I think you would agree with me. He was he went to Ohio and <laughs> New Jersey. He went to New Jersey. <laughs> you look at some of the celebrities uh, albums James Cleveland presents. Absolutely. Yeah. If, you know, if James Cleveland presented you, you were doing something. Yeah. Listen, they was gonna see you and they was gonna hear you. And hear you. That's right. That's right. And I mean, you know, and I liked it because he didn't hang on to what he had. He shared it with everyone, you know, where a lot of people, they, you know, get famous and they're like, I'm famous and you're not. Mm -hmm. But he was like, okay, come on, I'll present you. I'll do this. I'll do that. And I think that was the purpose of the Gospel Workshop of America Uh to showcase the different talents. Yep. Showcase and train. Showcase and train. Um, and where everybody you know, is somebody everybody yeah. and Christ is all but yeah we want to we want to make sure of that and this coming Friday um, we will Friday night 7 30 7 30 we will be in attendance um, and it is 
it is going to be something, going to be something, going to be something. Y'all, and y'all we saw Richard, uh, Richard Jackson. Mm-hmm. So he was, yeah, he was recording. So he's getting ready as well. So it, Richard it, will be singing with the choir <laughs> this year. Yeah, <laughs> he will be singing with the choir this year. And All so right. when we give, we give, uh, we give in tribute to the superstars, he was one of them back in the day. Exactly. Exactly. And, and still sounding good. Yes, he and looks good. And looking good. Won't he keep you? He will keep you. <laughs> Won't he keep you? Won't he keep you? Yep, he he will keep you. So, Pastor, what are you doing? Uh, can I tell you, Godfather left here June, January the 11th. I have been covering Christian Tabernacle since January. I have been to Christian Tabernacle every Sunday since January, inclusive of my own churches. So three churches. And the Lord has given me grace, though. He's he's given my family is supporting me, and uh, I'm working on the CD for Christian Tabernacle. And uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's quite a bit. I'm not gonna lie, it's quite a bit. Radio, and I'm working on our own church project. So yeah, I got my hands full. To whom much is given. I'm much grateful. Is required. Much is required. Much I could, required. I could be saying, uh, Albertina said, "You better go, Nick." Uh oh, I'm gonna say something. <laughs> <laughs> she said, <laughs> "She said, Lil N, you better go when they're calling you because there's gonna come a day when they're not gonna call you." Now that was Edna Tatum's line. She said, "Sam, go while they're calling your name, honey." Yep, go while they're calling. <laughs> Go while they're calling your name because there will come a time they may not call your name. So um, we want to could sure. I could be doing nothing, but I'm grateful to the Lord that I got something to do. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And um, we love our friends in Chicago. Um, there, There's, I mean, our relationship is is etched in in stone and nobody Absolutely. can do anything about that. Absolutely. Yeah, but everyone, please make sure that this Friday um, that you will um, do yourself a favor yes. and um, watch this concert. It's going to be virtual. If you are not in Chicago and you don't have tickets, um, please just watch it. It's going to be virtual. And um, we're going to run it right here on WVTC um, in Detroit. And just to, you know, because it's going to be good. If you're going to, if you're in it, uh, Pastor Patterson, we know that it's going to be a good, goody, goody gumdrop. That's what they I, used to say. I love you. Uh, we, we, hey, and tell our brother Rudy, Pastor Stanfield, that we're doing one of his songs. So we're going to be doing a. Uh, <laughs> Oh. We're going to do a Detroit song for Gospel Supreme this year. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That'll be good. That'll be good. I think it's going to be good. So get our family from Detroit, Old St. James, Prayer Tabernacle, get the family together and tell them uh, it's a tribute to you all's friend, Reverend Woods, because he used to love coming to Detroit. Yes, and, and we love Pastor Woods. Yeah. We did, we did, we did, we did. And every year we tried to show that we loved him. Um, and it wasn't and um, anything. We just wanted to make sure that we showed him that we loved him. And kept the relationship open. It was great. Yeah, yeah. And and he always looked, looked like he was happy to see us. So mm. that's what it's all about. I appreciate you allowing me to come on today. Yeah, well, it, it's 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 all about friendship. It's all about love, and that's what we do, and we try to show love. Thank you. Yeah. So what Thank we're going to do right now, um, our guest is here, uh, and you you're welcome to stay around because you know you know him. Uh, Who that? Lu- Lewis Price, Vernon, <laughs> Vernon's Vernon's <laughs> boy. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you that Lewis is. Let, let me tell you something. So we was at a service. And Lewis said, you know, I, I call on Lewis every time we had a service. I said, I'm gonna call you Lewis and say, you said, I don't know that song. Now when Lewis get finished singing, he has told the church to pieces with what he didn't know. <laughs> oh Lord, don't you hate those? I, I, I don't know the words. I, 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 
You know, I'm going to see what we's going to do. Uh, and then they get up and burn the house down. <laughs> Tears the house up. But we're going to bring him on and we're going to play this song. And, and like I said, Pastor Patterson, I, I, I would love for you to just stay around. But okay. um, we're going to play this song. This is GMAC. This is According to Your Faith right here on WVTC, Gospel Radio Station right here in Detroit. Stick, stay, and don't go away. We'll be right back.
ahead, Ramon. What they say, put down that cigarette. <laughs> 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 you know, you, it's, it's good. You have to listen to what people are saying on the songs because they'll get you, they'll get you. Um, and we want to uh, welcome everybody again to the Sandy Rose Show. And we've got Richard with us and uh, we've got Pastor Patterson and we got a lot of people out here giving you shout outs, Pastor. I'll give them to you in just a minute. And we have our special guest with us. You as know my well. video? Oh, start uh, video? Mm -hmm. No, they're um they're just shouting shouting you out. What you say? Yeah, they're saying Is that hey. Anybody? Yeah, they're saying hey. So um, how are you? <laughs> and we see uh we have our guest uh Mr. Lewis Price, amen. And his lovely wife, Faye Howser Price, amen, amen. And if you unmute yourself, we'll be able to hear you. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yes, yes. Um, all right, and we got we have some shout outs. Um, we want to say hi to everybody. Arnetta, um, all the way from Arizona to Michael Peters, Africa, Miller Hughes is watching, Roxy Wilson, Diane Gatewood Williams, we love her. Um, we love everybody though. Um, Gail Peterson, you get in trouble saying that. Um, Charles, Chuck, Chuck, Roosevelt Hamilton, one of your choir members, uh, Pastor Patterson. What's up, um, Roosevelt? Yeah, he's, he's a faithful on the show. Claudette Ogletree is watching. We have uh, Tony Horn is watching today. Um, Darlene, the twins are watching. Darlene and Arlene are watching. Celeste Fletcher. Um, and so many others are watching, but those are the ones who said, give me a shout out. And so that's what we do. We give them a shout out. And we're just so happy to have our special guest. And um, I don't have to introduce you, Lewis, to uh, Pastor DeAndre, because he says you have torn up the church <laughs> more than the, several times. Let me tell you, every time <laughs> I, to, I, and for some reason, I always emcee in somewhere where me and Lewis are. I, and I'm always going to give him the microphone. He said, now, what's the words? <laughs> <laughs> and Lewis, Faye, Lewis, well, you already know, but Lewis tears up everything uh, effortlessly. Uh, we I have like sang that. our lungs out. And <laughs> we have sang our lungs out. And Lewis come up there singing real pretty, like the Temptations, and tears the place to pieces. Uh, you're just overly <laughs> kind. What's up, Dre? How you doing? I love you, Lewis. Oh man, same here. You know I got love for you, baby. <laughs> Amen. And you know, while I was doing research, I had no idea who your mother was. Your yeah. mother tears us up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All the time. She comes the time. to Detroit every other year and gives us a fit. Gives oh, us wow. a fit. And we're going to, we have a video later on in the show that we're going to play uh, with your you and your mom singing, which is just I mean, just a joy to hear, just a joy to hear. So Sandy, this ain't my interview. This is yours and Lewis's interview. But Lewis comes from a family of preachers and singers. Okay. I mean, I mean, his mama sang, sings, his aunt sang, his grandmother was a church mother. I mean, big time in this church of God in Christ. So. He had better say, good uh, Lord. Okay, okay, you better say. Yeah, well, you know I what? mean, yeah. yeah, anybody out of Chicago, I, you know, and Detroit, you know, it's in the water. It was a prerequisite for yeah, us to be able yeah, to sing. It, it's in the water. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, when yeah. we were little, yeah. um, when we were little, um, if you couldn't sing by the age of two, they would put you up for adoption. <laughs> no milk for you, young man. No milk for you. <laughs> that means everybody in my family saying. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So how did you fight your way out of that? You know, how, how did you, you know, just move on into your own singing? Well, first of all, that was my training ground. Uh, like uh, Pastor 
was saying that uh, my, you know, my mom and my auntie and everybody where they sang. And so every Sunday, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we were in church. <laughs> church of God in Christ. Yeah. Hello, right. <laughs> that's right. Whether we wanted to be or not. Right? That's right. That's right. That's and right. And so it was just a big training, you know, period for me as a kid watching my mom and the uncle, uh, you know, my auntie, uh, she had married Rebert. Rebert Harris was the lead singer of the Soul Stirs. And that was a bad boy way before his time. Uh, DeAndre, you you familiar with Reeves? Uh -huh, I am. <laughs> oh, God. And I would I would suggest that everybody, whoever is listening to this program, go when you get a chance and listen to Reeves Harris and think about how far back in time he was and what he's doing when you hear him sing. But no, I used to go and see them, and and my auntie used to do a little thing for us. She said, Louis, will we go to conv uh, the convocation? She said, Lou. If you get the church to get happy and start singing and, 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 and sh shouting, I'll buy you whatever you want. <laughs> so, we'd be, <laughs> so we'd be down there and I'd be figuring out ways to make the church happy, right? <laughs> so uh, I had a lot of training and, and uh, a lot of prayers and, and God has gifted me. So I'm really just thankful, really. What'd you say? Uh, whatever you, you did, whatever you had to do, them cigarettes down. That's know? right. <laughs> Hello. You know what? No cigarettes in the Church of God in Christ. Not right? in the Church of God in Christ. Oh, I know Lord. that's right. I, I was know that's right. I was amazed because uh, we used to go to remember Rev Reverend Blair. Uh, Omega. Remember? Omega. And we would go to his church, man, and every I would I was so surprised the first time I went there because. They would take a break and everybody would come out and start smoking. <laughs> <laughs> Not what you say, clutch the pearls. Oh, <laughs> my it was amazing. But the Baptist church, they were smoking. Oh. Nothing against them, but they were smoking. Yeah. Hey, Luke, Smoke like shout champs, out your... honey. Smoke like champs. Yeah. Shout out to your church. <laughs> What's the name of your church in Chicago? Uh, in Chicago? Yes. Uh, my church in Chicago was uh, St. Paul Church of God in Christ. 4528 South Wabash, Bishop Lewis Henry Ford. Uh, you were pastor. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bishop Lewis Henry Ford. He was the, and he was Bishop of uh, the whole Church of God in Christ at one uh, point in time. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, you know, and that's where a lot of the singers, a lot of the musicians, they came right out the church. Yes. They came right out, yeah. church trained. And yeah. so it's it's pretty much what you're doing over there. Come do it for us. So yeah. Yeah. you know, Absolutely. and of course <clears throat> they the world has way more money than the church is willing to give, and you know we gotta <laughs> eat. That's the uh, truth. So. Have you have have you noticed the trend? The trend as far as the singers. I mean, like what you just said was so true. When we came up, most of the people came from the church. Mm -hmm. The singers started in the church. This day and age is not necessarily that, you know, they listen to it and a lot of people don't go to church anymore, you know, and they just listen to it on the radio, listen to it on the videos and whatever, and they get their thing from there. But in the old days, uh, when DeAndre was young, <laughs> and he was in started, knee pants. Most of them started from the church quartet. And, and, and you're right. I mean, <laughs> but if you think about it, and then the music was much cleaner. Yeah, yeah. Um, the lyrics were cleaner. The music was pure. Yes. Um, you know, where you could just sit down and be in, engulfed in this music. Yeah. Um, yeah. But now, you know, you can hear a song and it's like, okay, I'm right. good. And you <laughs> right. move on, you know. The but music I, of yesterday, the music of yesterday with uh, Motown sound, Temptation sound, it sounds like church. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was. Right. Uh -huh. That's it, it, it was the foundation. church singers. That's the foundation. That's the foundation. The writers went to church. The singers went to church. Yeah. Um, you know, so when they wrote something, they knew, well, I have, you know, I'm going to write this this way. Right. And they could say whatever they wanted to say. You knew exactly what they wanted to say, but it, it, they kept it clean. Everything yeah. was clean. Um, and like I was saying before, uh, when Aretha passed away, um, her pastor said, you know, somebody asked the pastor, were you going to play Aretha Franklin music, you know, in the church? And he said, she didn't sing nothing you can't play in church. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's the way most of the singers back yeah. then were. They didn't sing um, anything that you could not 
you know, play out loud on at, at church, you know, was all good music. And speaking of good music, um, we know that you were a Temptation, the lead singer for the Temptation. And when I asked, I have a, a friend and he is just a music buff, just a music buff, but he's only from the Temptations in that ear. You know, he don't fool around with this, you know, he, he's uh-huh. strictly there. And when I said, uh, Louis Price, he said, oh, he said, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And he pulled this song up that I'm going to play. And the lyrics were just outstanding. And it's Think For Yourself. Oh, and, wow. And th- these are words that we need to hear today. So we're going to play this song. We'll be right back after this song to talk to Lewis Price and his lovely wife, Faye Hauser Price. And we've got Bish- uh, Bishop Andre, Dr. <laughs> Bishop Reverend, Bishop uh, Max of God. DeAndre. <laughs> I know everything. And, right. DeAndre. And we've got Richard here with us. We'll be right back after this song. This is WBTC, the gospel radio station right here in Detroit. Yeah. 
song i mean you opened up talking about the president <laughs> yeah uh you know it was, it's amazing how some some songs just transcend uh and so appropriate for you know just the time that comes as well as the time that was it was recorded or, or, or produced in there was another song and I'm, i don't know if you're going to get to it so i'm not going to try to say it too much of, on it but it was it's really synonymous of, of what's going on. Uh, and it's the peace song. I love, I, that one just, I didn't realize how, how uh, poignant it was. I, I really like that song. Think for yourself, I didn't really necessarily like that song as far as the performance of it, but I, I like the words. Yeah, the words, the words are outstanding, yeah. outstanding. Um, yeah. We've got some people out here. I don't know if you can see the screen, but um, we've got some people. Claudette Ogletree is um, shouting you guys out and Patricia <coughs> Wilson Baker and Charlotte Fletcher. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, I know yeah, some of those yeah. names, Ogletree and everybody, yeah, and Fletcher. Yeah, and but Fletcher. yeah, and people are talking about the um, the message in the song and how nice it is. Mm -hmm. wow. Think for yourself. So, uh -huh. you know, you don't know when you're yeah. doing stuff, it's all in a big plan, you know? Yeah. So, what was the title of the other song that you were talking about, Lewis? Uh, it's it's Let's, uh, Let's Live in yes. Peace. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you know, Sandy. Yeah, <laughs> we have <laughs> another one that we're going to play a little bit later on in the sh in the show. Um, and then we're going to play. We got a clip of you and your mom. So we're going to play that as well. So I, I don't know. Uh, uh, DeAndre might have been in the audience for that one somewhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but now, how did you how did you get to be a temptation? Well, um. That was the thing I had, you know, that was another prerequisite in our family. <laughs> okay, just kidding. Um, uh, that happened, um, it was, it was kind of, it was kind of weird because um, I was at Jerry Butler's studio uh, and that was downtown on Michigan uh, in Chicago. And uh, we used to go there as kids and we would, trying to get record deals and we were writing and we was with this great team of um, a duet of songwriters, Terry Collier and Larry Wade. And they wrote a bunch of songs for the Dells and, you know, smashes and, and uh, they were our, um, what do you call it? Um, um, sensei, <laughs> they were teaching us how to get into business and write and everything. So. We were down there performing with them, and every time we would go down there, we would see every all the greats: Jerry Butler, Donny Hathaway. You know, we would see Sonny Burke. Uh, oh man, everybody would just come through. Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, the um, Duke of Earl. You know. So anyway, wow. um, we um, we had signed a, a, a record deal. Uh, the group that we were working with down there, and it's called the Brown Paper Bag. And um, I stayed close to school because I didn't go away to college. I had a little scholarship here, and but I wanted to stay close to school so I could be in Chicago in case something jumped off. We could just, okay, let's do it. Uh, it didn't happen. So I finished college and then I was went back downtown to visit Jerry and see how they were doing. And his manager said, Lou, Lou, how you doing? I said, I'm good, I'm good. He said, man, we got an opening for the uh, impressions. Why don't you go and try it? I said, impressions? I said, man, I, you know. Another guy was with us. He said, man, you can't sing with no impression. So it was like a dare. And I said, what? I said, man, I can sing with anybody. I said, well, you, are you crazy? So I told him to make the appointment, make the, you know, the uh, appointment. So he made the appointment. It was at the High Chaparral 
So we went down to the High Chaparral and they had this big boom box, uh, Fred and, and, and uh, Fred and Sam. And they say, hey man, you know, can you sing this song? I say, I don't know it. I said, but just play a little of it. So they played a little of it and uh, I said, okay, you can cut it out. And then uh, I, I started singing the song and he said, oh man, oh man. He said, okay, when can you come to rehearsal, right? <laughs> So I said, oh no, you know, it's so anyway, I was unofficially or officially in the group and I started rehearsing with them and everything. And <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I had just started teaching school and I had a choir and everything. It was eighth grade and I just wasn't feeling it. And so kindly and respectfully, I asked them, could I kind of like pass on the opportunity? And they were kind of like um, disappointed, but respectfully, they just honored my, my wishes. I left. And a year later, they were performing in, in California at the, at the Troubadour with uh, another singer named Nate Evans. And uh, Melvin went to the show. And he went to the show and he asked, he said, hey, you guys know anybody? We're looking for a lead singer. They had a, a worldwide search. And uh, thankfully, Sam and, and um, Fred had my number. They kept my number and they they gave Melvin the number and they say, Hey, here's a cool guy. And I, I just, and it tells a story because if you do things respectfully and, and keep, you know, um, you know, thoughts, not just think about yourself and don't just, you know, be neglecting other people's feelings, you know, things will come back to you. So the way I left the group was great for me because the people still love me and they still have my number and they passed it on. So I got a, I got a call. Mm -hmm. Now, when I got a call, this, the call was crazy because I wasn't even at home. I was over at my auntie's house and I was playing with my uh, cousin and I was doing Donald Duck. I'm like, blah, 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 blah. Right? <laughs> and so the phone, she, my auntie calls. She no, said, no, 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 no. We're not going to go past there. That, no, what did you, what? <laughs> hey, but wait a minute, let me tell you something. It was <laughs> Melvin on the phone. And he, he said, you know, the voice was so deep but my auntie thought it was my brother. And so he, uh, I almost lost the gig because I was playing Donald Duck with him. And then he, <laughs> he said, hey man, I'm, I'm beginning to be annoyed by the whole thing, you know? And so I said, you Melvin Franklin for real? He said, I'm beginning to be annoyed by the whole thing. <laughs> and I said, oh my God, I was so embarrassed and sorry. So anyway, after that, he told me to send this in, send that in, send this in. And that was history. I went, I sent the stuff in, I went and auditioned, they sent for me first class and I just made it. I, I wanna add something to your story, Lewis, um, which is that you didn't really have all of the things in place to send in um, right. The, right. the right package, as right. we would say in the industry, a, right. you know, a professional demo tape, a, a picture of yourself with the proper lighting 10. and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. He, didn't have, he didn't have all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So he took a picture that he had with somebody else and he cut them off <laughs> and he had a picture that he sent mm -hmm. and he didn't have a studio access. So he found, you know, in that days they were making um, long intros to songs. So he took mm. the long intros to a song that was already produced and a hit attempts. and sang, attempts. right, and sang to that and yeah. said that in. So the other thing that you must, you know, do is not stop yourself Same from thing. sharing your gift in right. whatever fashion that you can share it, because right. you never know exactly how somebody will take that and use right. it. That's and we good. say what God has to... for you is right. for you. And it doesn't have to be presented so professionally and perfect, <clears throat> you know. That's the that was the uh, lesson that you learned in that regard. You know? Okay, so, so now, go ahead, Lewis, go ahead, Lewis and Faye. What did Mother Oliver say <laughs> during all of this? That's what I. That's what I always <laughs> wanted to know. <laughs> now you talking about Grandma or Mom? <laughs> grandma, Grandma, Grandma was cool, uh, but she was like the deep, strong, pure Church of God in Christ woman, all the way. And, yeah, and so we didn't share too much with her until afterwards, right? <laughs> and but she was good. Uh, you know, I think another thing that's good is that how you carry yourself. You know, it had it, it just takes you a long ways, or it takes you a short way. You know, and so the way I I always tried to carry myself with my mom and everybody. I didn't. I knew they didn't. They weren't perfect for some reason. I knew that at a young age, <laughs> and so I was forgiving. You know, uh, and so I knew that they were doing their best to raise yeah. me, 
Uh, and I knew if I was do what I had to do, continue to use my personality, I could win them over and they would trust me. So I could do more things than a lot of people who were in the church could do because of my ethic, work ethic. I, when I did my work, I did it hard, as good as I could always, you know, and I made sure it was complete and they didn't have to come back and say, what's this, what's this, what's that? Then I had a great personality. So that kind of gave me more freedom and more, you know, uh, leniency. I, I was, I got a lot of favors because of that. And, and let me add, as you can see, you, he was a communicator as well. It wasn't like he was holding secrets or anything like that. Yeah. He, could, he yeah. talked to his yeah. parents. Yeah. So yeah. How, how did you guys meet, Lewis and Faye? We met backstage at the uh, Temptations reunion concert at the, was it at the Greek or the Hollywood Bowl? One of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so you I, had to be a temptation in order to, it, it all went in line. It all worked. Yeah, yeah it, all, <laughs> it all, all worked together. I guess yeah, it's she, it. And I was a songwriter at the time. So uh, I was looking for uh, uh, some songwriting partners. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> you, and you stick it to that, right? That's right. <laughs> and I fell for it. <laughs> but well, it was a good that, fall. Uh, hey, mission accomplished. Yeah, it was a good song. It was a Mission good song. accomplished. Well, speaking yeah. of that, we have another song that we're going to play because we want our audience to be uh, to to know your music, and this one is "It's Time for Love." Oh and, my God! Yeah, we'll be right back after this song with uh, we have Faye Howser Price and Lewis Price and DeAndre Patterson and Richard Darrell Nichols and Lottie Dottie and everybody. <laughs> we'll be right back after this song.
All right, all right. It's time for love. It's time for love. And a little dancing. <laughs> a little dancing. <laughs> you have to dance during the pandemic. You do. You have to sing. Oh, yeah. You have to dance. Oh, That's yeah. the only way we're going to make it through this is singing and dancing in the house. So, um, but I know Richard is, Richard is sitting on a couple questions, but during that montage, we saw a couple pictures with you, Faye. Um, one was Roots, and I have a couple questions about, and the other one was Good Times. Yes. JJ, yeah, you were on the episode of Good Times. Yeah. We yeah. saw you and didn't know we were looking at you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you're quite the accomplished actor, actor uh, director, uh, all of that. All of that. So, yeah, you guys are a power couple. Yeah, power couple. Trying to continue to be creative and manifest what God gave us, you know? One of, one of my um, favorite stories in the Bible is the story about the talents and being given talents and then not using them. And, and I, I'm, I'm struggling always not to be the one who's burying those talents yeah. because I have a tendency not to be as outgoing as my husband. And um, so that's my struggle. That's not burying talents. So how did you get into acting? Um, I always tell people, um, I grew up in the segregated South. So there were no, very little um, show of black people in, in the arts at any level. Uh, television for sure, they cut out everything that was positive in the movies when they sent it to the South. Uh, the only show that I really saw and loved was Our Gang, The Little Rascals, in which there were two black characters in there. And me and my friends used to do all the things that the little rascals would do, and they put on plays and shows. And yes, that's what did. we did as yes, well. Did. So that's how I started, putting on shows for the community. So um, so how did you get to an episode in Good Times? And that, so on and so on. That was actually my second um, show that I did when I came to Los Angeles in the late 70s. I went to, I, I was in a uh, theater company in North Carolina. I, I was blessed to do that. Um, and um, after that was finished, I went to New York. Um, I was in a, uh, uh, I was a lyricist at a record company for a while. Um, I did some commercials. You know, I did the, the uh, actor hustle in uh, New York, which at the time, only people who had uh, a union card could uh, participate in auditions and blessed from the North Carolina experience, I had a union card. So I got uh, an interview for the touring company of Pearly. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, with Bob Guillaume and um, and uh, I got in it and we toured the country and we came out here. Um, I went back to uh, New York for a while and continued in the record company and then came back to, out to LA. And when I came back out to LA in the late seventies, um, I got a couple of auditions. My first show was uh, What's Happening. My second show was Good Times. And my third show was Roots. Now, uh, somebody says she was JJ's girlfriend. That's correct. <laughs> they, 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 tagged you. they tagged you. <laughs> that, show, that show runs all the time. It has run since the 70s. All the time. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, it, is the check still running? I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> Pennies. Pennies. It, right. Still, yeah, it, yeah. still yeah, there. Well, put gas in the car, you know. But, but the presence is still there, so. Yeah, yeah, and your name is still there. Exactly. Right. Yeah, Excellent. and that's that's what's important. Your name is still there. Nobody can take that away from you. Um, and that's that's great. That's great. So how do you two balance? Well, I'm I'm gonna let Richard Richard go ahead and ask your question. Okay. First, I would like to say I'm elephant happy and tiger glad to be here, Lou and Faye. Um, <laughs> you're one of my best friends and. I appreciate you when you called and prayed for me when I was going through my cancer bite, uh, bout. That was very encouraging and inspiring to hear you on the phone. But uh, I, Faye, I talked to Lou last week and he said he runs his house. He said he runs the dishwasher, <laughs> vacuum cleaner, 
in the dryer. <laughs> but no, going on what Sandy was probably hinting to, you being a Hollywood couple, uh, how have you sustained? What's the key in sustaining your marriage? That's good. Um, Lewis, like I said in the other section, is a communicator. And that's the blessing I think that we have in this relationship, because I'm not, but he is a communicator with a good attitude. Right, right. So he is always encouraging us to, encouraging me, I have the problem, to communicate more. And, and I think also we were blessed, both of us, to have parents who sustained a relationship for over 60 years, each one of them. Right. And so we saw them go through things and we saw it not perfect. And we saw them persevere in spite of. Yes. And we saw that it was good. <laughs> okay. Even though it was flawed, it was good. Um, and so I guess we were both dedicated to, if we made the pledge that we would, that we would go on the journey to make it work, to make it right. last. To, you know what? Um, I think Ruth Bader Ginsburg said uh, one quote, how did her marriage last? And she said, you have to be a little deaf. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. She said that. Sometimes you have to just be deaf. Right. So, what? But you also have to be a little what? outspoken uh, as well. Go ahead, Lewis. Uh, I was like, what? What did he say? What? <laughs> yeah, you just have to just say, I didn't even hear that. Oh, and take a breath. That. I didn't even hear that. And take plus a you breath. Said that and know that this too shall pass. Uh -huh. And it That's takes time. Advice. We're good all advice. flawed and it takes time for, you wanna change somebody else, but it takes time to change yourself. Yes. So just be aware that as much time as it takes for you to do something different, you know, to get up off the couch when you, when you don't want to, or to, you know, eat right, or, you know, all of that stuff. Um, if it takes you time, it takes them time. And that's, that's you know what you got to continue to believe and know. And now, how, how long she's an evangelist. All... Yeah. Okay, <laughs> give her the mic. Give her the right. mic. She's an evangelist. <laughs> <laughs> so how yeah. long have you guys been married? Lewis? <laughs> she said, oh, a, oh, a long oh. Time. oh we, we've been married. Uh, well, we've been together for 37 years. Okay, all right. And, uh, all right. You know, we don't talk about the um, the the sin time because of Church God and Christ. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's real. Uh, we we um, we took a little while, um, but we did it, and that was important. And I wish I had I wish I had done it earlier because um, I I was blessed. I married up, and um, as you can see, she's the smart one in Aww. in this relationship. Uh, in Aww. fact. <laughs> and that's why she married me because she was smart. Yeah, I, have a, <laughs> I was just about to say he's gonna have a good week. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait a minute, I messed that up. <laughs> but um, now we're gonna play this this next song. This next song is with you and your mother. All right. Yeah. That, I'm, yeah. I'm. I might like that better. Now you produce, did you, I think you produced this. This is um, Sing Me a Song. Yeah, uh, Faye and, and I, we, um, we thought it was time. See my mom, she had been singing for years and years and uh, she never really she had her own record. Since she was three or four, right? Um, Since she was me? three or four. Oh yeah, she was a prodigy, she a child prodigy. She really, they used to sit on the table when she'd go down to the Memphis, the, the convocation, they used to stand her on the table and, and she would just throw it down. She, she's, she's anointed, really she is. Every time she sings, I'd get chill bumps, you know, and- uh, We know. And it, yeah, she's, she's <laughs> bad, man. So she, anyway, she didn't, she never had her own album and, and that bothered me. And when I kind of like took the attention off of me you know, when you're young, you're trying to do what you got to do and you're moving and you move away from Chicago. It's a lot of stuff happening. But when I started going back and I started listening and hearing the stories about her putting up money and people running off with it and, you know, and then they would say, well, come and pick up your stuff. And then she would go to the studio, they would cut the lights out and people run out the back. And I didn't even know all that stuff was going on because, you know, you move away from home and you just don't know everything. So I felt really, really bad about that. And I said, okay, I, I, said my, I talked to my wife. I said, we're gonna have to do this. 
Now I was supposed to do my album, you know, but I just say, forget that. We put that on hold. Mom is more important. The timing is right and let's do it. So we um, started gathering stuff and uh, we had a, a really good uh, help with Larry Ball. I don't, DeAndre, you remember Larry Ball? Yeah, yeah. Larry Ball, he's a man, a great musician. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. He was um, MD for The Wiz. Uh, he, he played bass with Smokey for 20 something, 25 years. Uh, but anyway, he helped us coordinate, put it together and produce uh, this fantastic um, album on my mom. Yep, and this is one of Patterson's member, GMAC members. Yes, ma'am. And they don't come to a concert between Detroit and Chicago. We do this every year. Wow. And she sings every time because they always know we're going to pull her out so she can, <laughs> she can get the house. So, She's a secret weapon. <laughs> yeah. She is a secret weapon. <laughs> right. So we're going to play this song. This is Lewis Price and his mom, uh, the legendary Vernon Oliver Price with Sing Me a Song. And we'll be right back. This is WVTC, the gospel radio station. Oh, they got an old one, baby. <laughs> To me alone, time, time ago, she used to sing, oh, oh, oh. Louis. Keep 
I think that was the first time we ever did that. Really? Uh, that was before the album. Um, uh, and that was at um, Fred Jordan's mission. We used to go down there and feed the homeless. And man, it just just a note on that. It's, it's really gotten so much worse. I mean, at first you could go down there and you could see the sidewalk. Now you cannot see the sidewalk of the homeless issue the problem is really really bad and and we just have to continue to work with our community people to try to you know pass some laws to just do some better things for the homeless and try to figure that thing out because that's really it's really sad and it's all over the world we went to paris same thing everywhere you know? it is it yeah. is and that's why the songs that you sang you know you may or may not have you know yeah. felt it but they're relevant yeah, they're relevant because yeah. we need the Lord. We need yeah. to get together. We need to show a little more love, yeah. a little more understanding to each other. Um, you got so many comments and they were just throwing hearts up while y'all were singing. Um, yeah. And Roosevelt said there are secret we weapons, Vernon and Loretta and Pastor DeAndre. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and they come, they come with Detroit and they we be like, dang, they gonna sing again. <laughs> And um, Mama Price's album is still out there and available. Okay, and, and what's the name of the album? It's called Thank You, Lord. And it's Vernon yeah. Oliver Price. Yeah, yeah. It's and on, uh, CD Baby, it's on yeah. Spotify. It's um, at our website for download or you know purchase. And what's your website? Shop.houselights.com. Okay. You know, um, I... Pastor, uh, Pastor, you're going to like this. Uh, every week or two or whatever, Apple send me um, a uh, update on like sales and stuff like this. So mm -hmm. they send me uh, the, um, the, uh, the notice and it says, Lewis Price, you have uh, 457 new listeners. And I say, oh, okay. And it said, Vernon Oliver Price, you have 6,800. <laughs> <laughs> and 90 new listeners. <laughs> See? And, and and say, so we had one comment that said that that mother-son duet was amazing. You can see the love. Uh, Benjamin Wright said, Uncle Lou, love you. Uh, Sharon Jones, the CD is awesome. So they're witnessing to the CD. So uh, just go ahead. We all know that um, she can sing. She's a singer from Singersville. She oh, proves yeah. it every time she just comes in and just knocks us yeah. all out. And, you know, and now I see the, yeah, yeah. where where you got it, you got it from her. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we we, we love her. And um, I don't know uh, uh, if Richard told you, but every year we do a Christmas program. And uh, my wife and we put a big production on and people come from Chicago and and they come from all over Atlanta, everywhere, and they come and, and just grace grace us with their uh, presence. Can you hear me? I, I, I ain't been invited, Faye. What's oh, up with that? Cool. That's cool. <laughs> and, and that's what I'm saying. Ain't nobody told me nothing. You can have people from Detroit. Ain't nobody uh, told me nothing. Well, now I you know. know. <laughs> we, all right. we, gotta, we will make a note to that effect and, and make right. correct that. But she comes out and um, and my audience is what would you say, Faye? Predominantly what? Um, Seventy. Well, let's just say percentage wise. Asian yeah. And Jewish. Right. Mm -hmm. And when the people come, when the when the when the brothers and sisters come, in fact, that's what we got to do. Our, our people, we got to be a little more supportive and less cheap. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. because let me tell you what happened. Um, my wife said, "Louis, we didn't have enough blacks at our concert." You know. <laughs> so she said, "Well, let's make this. Let's make the tickets cheaper." 
I said, no, baby, we got to keep it in the line. If they want to come, just gotta, <laughs> they just got to come on with it. She said, no, I don't want, I want, I don't want to outprice them. I said, what do you mean outprice them? I said, the tickets are only, you know, she said, well, let's make them $25. I said, $25? So I said, okay, just do what you want to do. I'm upset. It's $25. She put the tickets out there for $25. You know, all the people who take care of business, who weren't black, bought all those tickets up. That's right. <laughs> but Sharon Jones said, ain't nobody told, told her and Ernest. Uh, I think Sharon knew about it. <laughs> Y'all over there had stuff. <laughs> but looky here, when, when they come out, when my mom comes out, in fact, that's what, they only come for my mom, really. And they look forward to it because every year, like you said, she's a secret weapon, right? Mm -hmm. And every year, Richard will tell you, mom comes out there and standing ovation, everybody's up and it's just amazing. Wow. And I'm crying all the time and it's it's just a wonderful scene. I mean, you guys would love it. You know? And mom is Great 90. show. Hey, Louis, mom is here's 90. Your, here's yeah. your last um, flyer. I'm That's sure right. Your, That's the last flyer. From December. Okay. Yes. And, and you know, we, do have, we have a great time with Loretta, too. Yes. Loretta. <laughs> Auntie Loretta comes out and everybody knows uh, Loretta. She uh, was with Operation Push. She was with um, Fellowship Baptist Church. What's that song? I'm, I'm on my way to heaven. So am I. Oh, I'm yeah. On my way to heaven. <laughs> yeah. You know, and uh, she comes out here every year. In fact, when my father died, it was it was such a touching time That's because weird. the uh, show was four days after my father's funeral and my hmm. mom i didn't want her to be bothered with it and and she said hey look make the arrangements and she was so just helpful in in letting me be able to do both things and we came back to the uh to, to california for the concert and my daughter stayed with um, my mom in chicago she said grandma if you want to come go to california she said i'll stay here and i'll take i'll fly you out there if you want to she said but no pressure do what you want to do and so it ended up, my mom flew out two days after, the, I think, the funeral. And she flew out to be with me. And she came out there on the stage, and it was nothing but tears for about five minutes. And it was just, it was, I'll never forget it, you know. She was just a, such a strong, supportive woman. And she's been there for me, you know, all my life. And uh, my mom, I, I, I love her. I'm good. Will you tell her how old your mother is? She's 90 years old. And Damn. still in and still in heels. <laughs> Hello, that's right. Yeah. And, and still, I don't know, but they can still wreck a church because her, Mama Lou, all of them yeah. come and they yeah. just uh, they just lay them flat on the floor. Yeah. And yeah. I, I got tickled. They did a um an article on um Mama Lou, and it was one of the songs I think your mom sang, and. Mm. She was up, and the next thing you knew, they took a picture of the guy. He was just spread out on the floor, <laughs> laid out cold, out cold. And they said, this is how they left him. <laughs> <Yeah, okay. laughs> oh, that's great. I don't so know written. if you know this, Sandy Rose, but um, she caught the coronavirus. Did she? In March. And she's... Praise God, she's doing well. She Hallelujah. God and her will and her strength and and all the prayers they really Amen. Really, really came through. Uh, Sandy, so our generation had our generation had the Clark sisters. Uh huh. Lewis's and Faye's generation had the Oliver sisters. The Oliver sisters. Right. It was four, right? It was Lucinda and right. B. Hey. And uh, Lucinda could sing, and yeah. she's going on. B could sing, but yeah. you should see—you should see them. They all almost a hundred with high heel shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad at nobody. Oh. So that's uh, it. Yeah, the, they made out of stuff that we. Oh not yeah, made that's out it. Of. That's, that's the it. album. I can't okay, it. okay. But when she sang just now, that when you guys were listening to her, she was 85 then. Right. Yeah. Yeah, still singing. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's what I'm saying. We have a fellowship every year um, with DeAndre's choir and our choir here in Detroit. And we just have this, this fellowship. And one year we go to Chicago and the next year they come here and back and forth. Okay. And so we've been doing this for about 12, 13 years now. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. And so every time, I mean, we get a chance to see them at least yeah. once a year, you know. And, and she's still great. traveling. 
she still yes. travels. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know what? Like I, I didn't know. She laid that boy on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna find the article. She laid him right on the floor. <laughs> And this and is how said, we this is this how, they, how we left them click. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. I didn't know that what she was going up there with you, uh, DeAndre. Mm-hmm. Every year, and yeah. uh, it, it is it is a great fellowship. But you know, mm-hmm. I think the thing that blesses Lewis and Faye, I think the thing that blesses everybody is that Vernon still wants to. Yeah, she loves to. Yeah. And even though she might not be able to stand through the whole concert no more, she'll sit down with the dignitaries, but she'll go up there and she'll sit in the choir for a little while. Yeah. And she'll sing background maybe one or two songs. She'll yeah. kill us and then she'll go back to her seat. <laughs> I mean, dead. <laughs> I ain't mad. Uh, I am not mad. But I, ha- I have one question that I have to ask you, um, Lewis, or else I'm not going to be able to, to go back around my friends. What is it? What was it like working with Otis? Because um, <laughs> they 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 yeah. just want to know how how, how was Otis? <laughs> you know, I don't know why y'all picked that name out. That person in particular. It must be some underlying thing to that, right? But uh, truth be known, <clears throat> Otis was cool. Um, Otis uh, was the business head of the temptation and and without Otis I don't well definitely they wouldn't have lasted as long and they wouldn't have stayed together uh and and, and created the dynasty that they created uh and they still moving on strong uh, because they just had a play that was phenomenal I went to the play and and Otis my, and my understanding is he was very instrumental in that play uh with the play but Otis is a a, a, a business uh nice um we don't talk as much as we used to uh but he's you know if he called me and want to borrow some money you know i'll let him <laughs> you, what you otis, say? i got five on it yeah otis is nice he's, he's a nice guy um and i don't i don't have you know one thing about living if you especially if you got to um when you just stay positive people are always that's right. changing that's right you know and if you can look forward you know, where you are, you, you can realize that their people go through stuff because of their past, where they came from mm-hmm. and how they have to, what do you call it? Uh, create their defensive mechanisms and That's be right. able to survive until they can get to another place and maybe have time to change and learn and love because that, that foundation is really what shapes us. And a lot of times we don't know what people have gone through. We don't have a clue. And so if you think about that and just have some empathy and and understanding, you can just deal with every, pretty much everybody, you know. And and I say that because um, when I was staying with Otis, I mean Melvin, when I went to California, I lived with Melvin. Okay. And Melvin, nicest guy. He was the heart. Uh, Otis was the brain. Melvin was the heart and the pulse. And um, so Melvin, I looked at Melvin and I and I I saw why he was the way he was when he was coming up. And I guess I could share this when he was coming up. He wasn't a nice, the nicest looking guy. You know, he had big eyes and he had, you know, I think his, his teeth might've been a little crooked and stuff. And he sounded differently than anybody. So that makes you weird right there, right? right. He opened his mouth, he sounded blah, 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 and people talking about you. But it's just like the, the, the swan, the ugly duckling and stuff. When Melvin got where he was able to do things for himself, you know, he got his, hair done he got his teeth fixed everybody started appreciating the voice yes they did it was, yes, it was they unique did. it was phenomenal mm-hmm. and so i understood and when i looked at him and, and had to live with him and deal with him i said hey my hats my 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 head my hat's off because i knew kind of like what he had gone through and i knew a lot of people go through that and i know i go through it. i know a lot of kids go through it. they don't have professional help so I look at people and say, hey, this is where you're coming from. No problem. I'm coming from somewhere different. You know, I love you. I appreciate you. And I respect you. And I'm, I deal with them like that. Right. And Your we're faith. all a sum total of our experiences. Yes. You know, of, of whatever life has brought us. Yes. We, you know, that makes us us. Right. You know? mm-hmm. So you have to respect that, you know. You don't have to like it. But you, you, but you need gotta to respect it. it. But you got to respect it. Yep, you need to respect That's that. good. 
Good yeah. stuff. And know that people, like you said, can change. Yeah. So to keep an yeah. eye out for them and support them when they do change. Yeah. 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 And give give them and be patient with them while they're going through the yeah. process. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. you know, they think the same thing about each of us, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, right. Somebody is doing this to right. us. So right. we have to be patient to somebody like Albertina said, please be patient with me. God mm -hmm. is not through with me yet. So yeah. and he's gonna yeah. work on me till I go to sleep. <laughs> and when we were in the temps, when I was with the temps, me and Otis used to hang together because Otis was very thrifty, very thrifty. And so I saved my money as well. And you know, we used to hang and do things together. So I, my hat's always off to Otis. I, I respect him for his accomplishment and uh, and the things that he's just um, continued to do, the creation that he's still involved in. And, and we we had a comment. Um, that says that was a great way to characterize a person. And that's the truth. You have to have empathy for people because you have no clue what people have gone through. There you go. Great answer. Great there answer. Great answer. Sing a little bit of that, Lou. Pardon me? I said sing a little bit of that. Oh. What's that? What's the dumb? Oh, you never know what, what you never know what's going on in someone else's life. You never really know what they've gone through or had to sacrifice. You never know how much a hug, a smile, some love can make it right. Stuff like that. Mm. Oh, mm. How beautiful. How beautiful. Thank how you. beautiful. That's that's just great. That's just great. Um, this is this has been an amazing <laughs> Richard, did you have a, were you, uh, did you exhaust your questions? <laughs> well, I don't know if Lou wants to talk about this since we're talking about helping each other. Uh, Lou, you told me the story about this young girl that you were trying to help get in school and she told you one thing at the end that touched you and her. Do you mind just giving a brief uh, synopsis of that story? Yeah, I, yeah, I guess it falls in the line of what the subject matter we, we, we're speaking on, right? Yes. Uh, you're talking about the, yeah. Um, a young girl, uh, I can see if I can shorten this really short, but a young girl was going through some challenges in her life and I had no clue what she was going through. And I, my wife and I sought out to help her because we saw her being a, a girl that really wanted to work hard to be as good as she could and uh, in track in this particular uh, setting. My daughter ran track and every year we would go to this track meet and this girl would run hard and she would run, and, but she would never make it, you know, but I could see this, her drive and her, her, her passion and her, her commitment. And so I sought out to help her. I said, you know, maybe I can help her. So I looked around in this big stadium and found her mom and I asked her mom, could she, you know, I took my wife with her. I said, look, this is no funny stuff. This is my wife, but I want to work with your daughter. My daughter is Sierra and, and we want to, see if we can help your daughter kind of like reach some of the goals. So anyway, um, the mom let us do that. And so we, my wife and I and, and, and uh, uh, Auntie Helen, we took this girl all over. We traveled with the Junior Olympics and took her this way and basketball team and everything. And I would drive her home. I would go about an hour outside to go pick her up and come back and drop her off. And so one particular time I had asked her if everything was right because I sensed that something was kind of going wrong. And I said, hey, if you, are you all right? And she said, hey, yeah, yeah. And I said, well, okay, if anything you bothering you, just let me know. So anyway, um, after high school, we, we tried to get her in college. We, 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 we enrolled her in Sylvan and everything. We really tried hard. And she, she just couldn't make it. And I kept calling the college coach and say, hey, give us another chance. Can we come in later on? Can you hold a scholarship and everything? And the college coach said, yeah, since you're trying to help, we're gonna do it. But it never came to fruition but we got her in junior college and she just kind of got tired. She said, coach, thanks. I'm just gonna stay here and I'm gonna do this. And, and, and thank you so much. Years pass and she comes back and she said, uh, she calls me and she said, coach. I said, yeah, and it's about 10 years, maybe more than that. She said, hi, I just wanted to let you know how much I appreciated you, know, you making these efforts and doing, working with us. I said, oh girl, thank you. She said, I, I, I told you, I used to tell your daughter that I wish you was my father. And that made me cry, right? So anyway, um, she, she said, I said, how is your mom? And she said, I finally told her. And I said, what do you mean? She said that 
her friend had been raping me since I was 13 years old. And I said, whoa. And something told me, you know, I think the Lord just spoke to me and said, Lewis, tell her it's, it, it was not her fault. And something just said that to me. And I don't know why those, those words seem kind of corny. And hey, it's not your fault. I said, hey, it was not your fault. And when I said that, she just started screaming. I said, oh, Lord, I said the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. And then she started screaming. And then when she came to some audible sense, she said, nobody had ever told me that before. So what it was that she had been blamed for it. That's right. And a lot of people never hear those words. You know, mm -hmm. but when she heard them, it just just let out stuff that she had been holding in for years and years and years. And so I think that's the story that Richard. Right. I, to elaborate let on. people know that well, even things that they're going through, uh, things that happened to them, like my mother and father divorced when I was three. Yeah. But, but my uh, I remember my third grade teacher was saying, if you on welfare or if you your parents are divorced, remember, it's not your fault. And when right. she said that, it seemed like a, a weight came off of my shoulder or something, that it wasn't my fault. And I think that helped me to yeah. strive to be a better person. Yeah. And DeAndre? Yes, sir. Don't try it. I'm already, I already wrote it. Um, I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> what is not your fault? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I wrote those words down, but the Lord gave you that to give to her. And yeah. uh, for all of the religious people that don't think that the Lord can use people Right. That don't sing gospel all the time. Right. The Lord will use whoever he wills to use. That's go. right. And he, he'll word the people's mouths to bless there the people go. who need it the most. Come on. Yep. And right. he puts you in you guys in the environment mm -hmm. where people don't readily get the word. But mm -hmm. you have the word in your heart. Absolutely. And you know what to, you know, he'll give you what to say to yeah. someone right there where we'll never touch these people. We'll never Absolutely. see them, but yeah. you, you see them all the time, you know? Yeah. So it's um, a religious, a, it's the religious people. that's always got something to say no. about folk that might not bust the church doors down. Every time right. the doors open, God mm -hmm. uses who he wills yeah. to use. It's a relationship. It's yeah. a kinship. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a uh, fellowship. <laughs> With you know, Lord. but it, it, it's all about your relationship. It's not about whether I attend church every single Sunday, right. you know, but do I have a relationship? Mm -hmm. And you, you know, you guys were brought up in, in the way. And, and you, will you be you know, willing to be that vessel? And Lewis yeah. and Faye have been willing to be those they have vessels. Been willing. Mm -hmm. And things, we're, are, we're... things are coming out for you. Faye, I, I see you, um, you're a director and that's something that's difficult for a female um, a black female. Um, I, what what made you go down that path? Um, I guess going back to that little rascal thing, I always thought that um, I would be in production. And so um, as I aged out of the ingenue um, role uh, and Hollywood at that time wasn't really looking at women who were over about 35 and no with parts, um, I started thinking about what other path I could choose. I had a, 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 a friend, an associate who was producing radio programming as uh, satellite uh, communications with Bob, Bob Dockery. And um, he produced radio and I did some voiceover things for him. And he said, I'm getting ready to go into television. He had previously been with CBS. And uh, I said, well, when you start producing television shows, I would really like to come and watch, you know, you know what you're doing. And um, so when he started producing, he said, you know, come, don't come watch, come and, and put your feet in. in. Yeah, jump in and do it. We'll do it together. So I started um, producing uh, television shows with him. We did um, uh, Story of a People, um, which is what quarterly show about the African-American experience here in America, because at that time there was no programming, well, maybe one other show about African-Americans in an in educational, um, informational um, 
mode. We did uh, Black Hollywood. We did uh, the ties that bind when um, uh, uh, South Africa became, uh, got rid of apartheid. Mm -hmm. um, we did Paris in Search of a Dream, which we went to Paris and looked at all of the African-Americans who were there at the time who had left the United States mm -hmm. because of the glass ceilings everywhere, mm -hmm. uh, which was the same thing that they had left. They had been brought actually after apartheid to South Africa to help train the Africans in some businesses like, you know, McDonald's and Revlon and all of those businesses who were there, but they wanted an African American, they wanted a black presence at the business and they didn't see any Africans there that they would trust with it. So those two places were places where African Americans who could not rise here went. And we did some programming about them. We did a program uh, called 24 seven, which was about the experience of uh, young, young uh, America. Uh, we had like a, a talent show thing like uh, American Idol before there was American Idol or internet or any of that other stuff. But this was the programming that I got into. And um, because of that, I got a, a, a PBS uh, program to direct and I had to join the Directors Guild in order to do it. And so that sort of sent me into that realm. <laughs> Well, I mean, and it's a good realm to be in. And now um, are you, you still active, actively doing it? Yeah. Yes, yeah. everything, all fingers working. All I, I, I feel all you, I feel you. <laughs> Music, acting, directing, producing, all of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. going, while, going while they calling your name, yeah. huh? Plus I use her fingers too. <laughs> I know that's right, I know that's right. So what's in the future for you two? What, what, what are you, I, you know, I, I, I tend to look at the pandemic as being in the house, but while we're in the house, we need to be doing something. We can be doing something. What, yeah. what are you guys, how are you going to emerge? Well, I'm working on a few projects. One is a, a feature film about uh, an African-American rescue uh, team in 1898. Um, they rescued a, her, uh, a ship in a hurricane off the North Carolina coast. It was the only black team of rescuers. So they were appointed after reconstruction or doing reconstruction. I'm working on that. I'm working on my own book of poetry and, um, and short stories. Uh, working on a documentary about my family who's had more than a hundred years of family reunions. Oh, wow. wow. That's good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Working on um, a, a project with the Los Angeles Women's Theater Festival for an, an upcoming um, online theater production and working with my husband. Uh, That's good stuff. Hey, yeah, I talked with, talk with Claudette Robertson, and she told me that you are doing, the, you did the voice over for her book. Claudette Miraculous uh, Motown Adventure. Motown Adventure. Right. right. Lewis, you did the voice. That's a cute book. I yeah, I I I um I like Claudette. Um, I've always liked her. She's always had a sweet spirit, you know. She's watching you. How she is. <laughs> <laughs> and so I I I usually call her every what two or three four months and just check on her as I do. A lot of people because I, I'm, I'm that kind of person. I like to reach out and let people know that people are thinking about them even when they don't even think that the people are thinking about them and praying for them as well. So I, some, every now and then I just give evidence of thought, you know, and I pray and, and, and then do a confirmation call. Okay. So, uh, but Cla Claudette is doing some great things and she asked me to, you know, be a part of it. And I just say, hey, for you, for you, I give a lifetime of serenity. <laughs> Can't sing that. We don't have the licensing for that, do we? This is cable. You can do anything. But no, she's a beautiful lady, and I just wish the, the best for him. And also, um, you know, uh, Smokey, he's very, very supportive. I do a lot of stuff, uh, you know, for Barry Gordy, and, uh, and we come together, and that's just like my family. They've always accepted me as like family. And so we just did a, um, uh, uh, we honored Smokey um, at the- um, Grandson? Where? Was it his grandson at the Beverly? Yeah, yeah, 
we honored Smokey at the, well, we did it at the mission, midnight mission, midnight. but we also uh, um, uh, did a thing for his grandson at the, uh, I forgot the hotel, but they've always been there, family, supportive, loving, hugging, you know, extend invitations to me. I used to do Barry's, Barry Gordy's birthday party every year. And uh, it so happened to be, I think the same, if the same day or same couple of days uh, as my mom's birthday. You know, my mom's birthday is December the 1st. So if anybody want to send her a card or just Amen. wish her a happy Amen. birthday, you can always do we that. We can do a drive-by, you know? There you go. Yeah, there you go. do the drive-by. Do but no drive bullets, by. please. Oh, yeah, no. No. <laughs> but no, uh, is... also, I'm working, on, um, I'm working on my album. I've been working on this album since I started working on my mom, my mom's album. And um, I got some really nice people who are really uh, helping me. I, I don't know if people know Jackson Brown. Uh, Jackson Brown, um, man, a great, great guy. Um, he offered to, you know, to assist me in trying to get some things done and uh, in um, in contribution to the album. And um, Larry Ball is working with me on that. I just re releasing a song. We did a song called "Play It By Heart." No, 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 not "Play It By Heart." What is it? It's called "When Doves Cry." When Doves Cry. And it's out. And it, and people should check it out. We re uh, reimagine. Um, um, Is that out right now? Yeah, it's out. Okay, uh, it's, we, we it, it, okay. We'll, <laughs> we'll do the download thing. Yeah. Hello, uh, and that's Star Parody and Lewis Price. When doves cry. Okay. Uh, and we just are. I don't know if it's released now. It might be already released, but we just did a song uh, that we released uh, in the in the last few days. I have to check and see if it's officially released. But it's called um, "What Do You Think of That," and that's what Star Parody meant. Star Parody. Star was the keyboard player for the Arsenio Hall show. Okay. Uh, when it first came out, and it's amazing because we've been together for so many years. It's amazing now when you're talking about. You got it. You're I talking got it. about 1977. Is when I went with the Temps. Okay, and I was probably. Download. Download. Say ninety nine cents. Hey, I got it. I got it. <laughs> so we 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 doing a whole bunch of stuff, but I'm really excited about my album because I've learned so much since since my journey started um, with the chimps, and especially since my journey started with with in life uh, with the gift that God has given me, and uh, I I'm I'm so excited about what what lies ahead. I'm so excited about the times that 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 are going on now. We. We have some challenging times right now, but you know this time is going to make us better uh, yeah. for the time yeah. to come. And yeah. so we got to look at everything positive. You can't be humdrum and just thinking that everything is bad and negative, but just look and find all the good and just be mm. thankful for it because there's a lot of good here, regardless of all the other bad things that are that surround us. But if you focus on the good, then it will permeate, you know. But if you focus on the bad, it will permeate as well. So. We got to think in that regard, but I'm excited about the future. I'm excited about uh, my blessing as far as living here, uh, being with my wife, who's being very helpful. She's the smartest person in my relationship. Uh, Rich, I'm excited about Rich. Um, he's always been there for us. DeAndre, this cat is always there. He always helps my mom and, and it really just touches my heart. Yeah. Uh, Santa yeah, Rose, because yeah. Yeah. every time I come, they, they say, we're going to try to call DeAndre, and he's always there. Yeah, And it's just so loving and so receiving and so caring and just oh, so man. real. I really appreciate him and and the things that he do in Chicago, that he does in Chicago and, and the things that he do for my mom and my love family. You, sir. So love my, you, sir. my love to you, my, my, my prayers to you, you know, because I really love and appreciate you so much, okay? Thank and you, Sandy man. Rose, you're going to be, you got it, you're in my list now, you're going to be my girl. That's right. <laughs> then, what? You're going to be my girl. What? We did also, we did a thing, I don't know if people know this, we did a thing for Gladys, and I oh. think of Gladys all the time because I'm going to try to, uh, she doesn't know this, but I'm going to try to get Gladys to, to come and appear on my show. Because oh. I think we're still, we're still going to, I think we're still going to do the, the uh, December concert, um, Rich. Uh -huh. but, we just, but we just got to figure out how we're going to do it, you know. Okay. Uh, but we might do a streaming thing or whatever. But yeah. uh, I'm going to try to get. I'm going to try to get. I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it. Anyway. I'm going to try to get Smokey and and Gladys to kind of like show up on a Zoom or whatever, 
and we're gonna and, have and a you, good time. You can. Um, oh, yeah. uh, DeAndre is having a concert this week, and and like I, I, I could really sit here and talk to you guys all uh-huh. day. Uh-huh. And so you have to, we'll have to get the number and we'll call it. Right. But, <laughs> but um, we have a couple of announcements because the hour is uh, far spent and before we go around for closing thoughts. Okay. And um, we want to give people the information that um, compliments of, of Detroit City Council President Brenda Jones. Um, are you having problems with your bills, your lights, your gas, your water, your property tax, burial? DTE is here to help you. And they will help you. You have to apply by Dece- by September 30th. The number to call is 1-800-477-4747. That's 1-800-4747. And you can get some assistance from DTE. And yes, this is for real. Wow. All right. We want to say happy birthday to one of the voices of this station. This is her big birthday. And um, we want to say happy birthday to Sojourner Jones. Um, amen. Amen. We also want to tell everybody, if you have not registered to vote, register to vote. Voting is not a privilege. It's your right. You need to exercise your right. Exercise your right. Do it. Do it. Do it. Plan to vote. Plan your vote. If you're going to mail it in, if you're going to go, if you're going to take some friends with you, plan what you're going to do. We're going to have a big show on um, later on in the month. Um, with um, uh, Dr. Bracey, who integrated the school system in Florida. Um, and we have Don Zelay Abernathy. We're going to have uh, Edna Bell from here in Detroit. And I think we're going to get uh, Dr. Iris Taylor is going to be on the show as well. So um, we want to talk about voting and how important it is that everyone votes. Um, and as we go around uh, for closing thoughts, DeAndre, I want you to make sure that you talk about Gospel Supreme. So closing thoughts, Richard. Well, first, uh, Lou and Faye, my favorite cousin, Rose Robinson is watching and Tony, and they, you know they're gonna be at the program when, yeah. whenever it is. Uh, I would like to first thank God for this opportunity. Thank uh, Sandy Rose for giving me this opportunity. Uh, Faye and Lou, I really appreciate you coming uh, and being on the program, uh, the show. I appreciate your talents, and I'm very proud of you. So thank you again for coming. Uh, I want you to spread the words, continue to give God the glory, and also spread the word to go out and vote. Amen. Absolutely. Um, Before we get to Elder Patterson, um, Elder... Uh, we got someone here that says, tell uh, DeAndre I said hello and God bless him, the president of his fan club here in <laughs> so, <laughs> That's Regina. She is the president What's up, Regina? Of, your, of your fan club. I love Detroit. my Detroit family. I love y'all so very much. I am excited about being on here with my sister Sandy, with Rich, uh, as especially with Lewis and Faye. Um, it's been great. I want to encourage you all to support Lewis, download that CD, download that music, get it, look for the things that Faye is doing and support it. Amen. Uh, and support our, our black community, especially right now. Uh, keep on supporting Rich and Sandy and support if you can Friday night in Chicago, Reverend Maceo Woods uh, Choir, Christian Tabernacle is having its 58th consecutive uh, legendary and historic concert. He went home to be with the Lord in January. He gave me the concert at the end of this last concert in September. And we're putting on uh, for him and tribute to him and tribute to his choir and all those great gospel singers that came up through there uh, Friday night at 730. It's going to be at the House of Hope in Chicago, but you can check it out by uh, uh, Facebook. And uh, I would love for you all to uh, hang with us. It's going to be a lot of memories, uh, a lot of great artists and stuff that have been through the choir's concert down through the years. James Cleveland, the Clark sisters, Rosie Wallace, and the list goes on and on and on. So we would love for you all to be a part. Friday night, September 25th, 7.30 p.m. on the Christian Tabernacle mm-hmm. Church Chicago page. Okay. And you can also, we're going to 
stream it over here on WVTC mm. in Detroit for those of you who can't remember to go over to <laughs> Thank you. Tabernacle. We're going to stream it here. In Thank Detroit you, Detroit. Before. Thank you, Sandy. We support. We support. Faye, uh, well, we have a lot of people here that um, Adolphus Bill, Benjamin yeah. Wright, um, Charlotte Fletcher, Claudette Ogletree, um, Jackie Harris, Andrea um, Hershellis, C.C. Robin Jones, Roosevelt Hamilton. So many people out here that's just saying hi, 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 hi. So you, you, you know, fake closing thoughts. Oh, well, I just uh, appreciate that you um, asked Lewis to be on this and that uh, he allowed me to piggyback on his I show. love it. I love it. Because <laughs> I wasn't supposed to be here. I love it. I love it. <laughs> So I'm just grateful for that. Uh, I'm appreciative of it. Um, I, I, I love um, having this opportunity to meet you, Sandy. Yeah. And to reconnect uh, yeah. Uh, with Andre and, and uh, Richard is always, you know, he's always yeah. there with capturing, Richard. capturing everything for us. So that's, <laughs> I just want to encourage people to, um, you know, to do the best that they can during this time of the uh, the uh, pandemic uh, to see it as opportunity to um, you know make it work for you because there are elements in it that can work for you as we see with this show, which mm -hmm. you know. Amen. Amen. So. And yeah, we uh, be, Lewis. Before we get on, we got CC Robin Jones and James Jaws Walker. <laughs> closing thoughts Lewis hey I I just want to first of all um, thank you Sandy Rose for you know being interested in in, in um, letting us have a platform yeah. to yeah. to be in, to be introduced to your people you know uh, and to you especially uh, we thank you and Rich for that and it's definitely a pleasant surprise to have uh, DeAndre and so that's a blessing um, I just <clears throat> want to encourage people to just stay positive um, also, you know, the mask, the mask thing, you know, it's very important. I think we all should wear our mask. We all should be thoughtful about people who maybe need help in the neighborhood. We should be thoughtful about helping people all the time, not just because of this pandemic, but if we could just give a little more love and, and more time and more consideration and, and more forgiveness to people, I think that would continue the world to be better. Uh, and know that when you look whatever you want to find is out there. And so what we have to do is say, okay, do you want to find negativity? You want to find positivity, you know, positiveness. So to me, you know, whatever you're looking for, you're going to find. So I would just advise people to look for the positive, look for the good, look for the love, because uh, you'll find that. And uh, I think that's a better thing to find than, than the negative and the hate. So let's just all work together. Let's be uh, not just black and white, you know, let's not be just Republicans and Democrats. Let's be uh, Americans, let's be unified. Let's try to improve the world. And to, but it started at home, started our homes, okay? So, hey, thank you everybody. I, I appreciate you, Sandy Rose, you, you darling. And thanks so much for everything. Yeah, you guys have got to come back. This was an awesome show, awesome show. Um, Elise, Lenny, Gail Peterson, they're all talking about good words, Lewis. Good, good words, uh, Faye. Um, we just love everybody. We love everybody. We're also praying for um, Pastor Jackie. She had, she's not on today. She had a an emergency at the church. So um, we're praying for her. And we just want to make sure that, that, everybody stays safe and you said it right with the with the mask and everything but what we want we like to tell people is that you're not stuck at home you're safe at home yeah. so um just make sure that you keep it safe we're going to watch you friday night um deandre will be right there um mm -hmm. say thank you so so much thank you so so much lewis you guys have got to come back because we did not exhaust your repertoire so <laughs> we want to bring you back so look forward to having you. you back on the show and we love you and there's nothing you can do about it this is a clip our closing is let me say one thing yeah, before you yeah, go. go ahead go ahead please join our mailing list at okay. lukeprice.tv
That's L-O-U-I-S-P-R-I-C-E dot TV. All right. Did you guys get that? Lewis Price. Dot Hold on. How you spell that again? <laughs> L-O-U-I-S-P-R-I-C-E dot TV. Dot TV. Oh, All right. And this clip is actually from one of our fellowships um, that we did uh, with GMAC in Chicago. And this wow. is the Detroit chapter. Um, and this is our, we play it for our closing every show. We want to tell everybody that we love you and there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. Bishop Mitchell said something on his show today and I want to reiterate that. And he says, just tell God, thank you. Just tell him, thank you. Whatever you do, write it on your Facebook page, right. put it on social media, just tell them thank you. He talked about the lepers and only one came back to say thank you. Huh. So you be that one to come right. back and say thank you because we know that thank you makes room for more. We thank love you. Me. There's nothing you can do about it. Night, night. night, night. Thanks, thanks to all our listeners too. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Yes. See you, Lou. Thanks. All right. Thank you. DeAndre, Faye, I'll see you next year. Elder Rudolph Stanfield. Sandy Rose, thank you, baby. See you, Lewis, I love you, man. Hey, love you, baby. Thanks for everything you do, man, you know that. Where is this, uh, Sandy? Chicago. In Chicago? First church of deliverance. Oh my goodness, I haven't been there in so long. And this was one of our concerts. What year was this? Stanfield. Okay. He's a problem. Rudy is a problem.
I love y'all. Y'all be blessed. All right, I'm out of here. Thank you for listening to The Sandy Rose Show with your host, Sandy Rose. If you have enjoyed this broadcast, won't you consider liking and sharing this with a friend or family member? We'd love for you to share it on your Facebook page. Thank you for tuning to WVTC Radio Detroit. Remember to like and share this broadcast with a friend. We are WVTC, winning victory through Christ.